Is your elevator being infested by filthy low ranks? Fear not. Try soloing. Just one game of solo fallen, and you'll never have to worry about those filthy low ranks ever again. Bang, bang. I love soloing. Well, that might not always be the experience you get when you solo fall in. Sometimes you just... die? Well, the point of today's video is to make sure those accidents don't happen. The important thing is not to give you a strategy that you have to follow or you will die slowly and painfully. It's more important for you to learn why the meta is the way that it is. Of course, there are towers that you always should use and there are towers that you never should use. This will be explained more in the loadout section. Quickly, let's first go over what maps you want to play on. You preferably want to play on a long map with lots of curves and tons of cliff space in the middle. The best maps for Solo Fallen, in my opinion, are Medieval Times, Autumn Falling, Portland, Harbor, Crossroads, and Four Seasons. Of course, it's also possible on many other maps, like Rocket Arena and Toy Board, but there's no point in trying for the majority of the others. Anyways, just see what maps work for you. Now for the important part. Picking which towers you can bring and which ones you have to leave behind. You only have 5 loadout slots, so use them wisely. For your first slot, it is necessary for you to use Ranger. You CAN use Accelerator or Swarmer instead, but Accelerator is harder to use, and Swarmer requires a lot of micromanagement, so Ranger is the best choice for this slot. Ranger will be your main source of mid to late game DPS, as well as having the responsibility of killing all high defense enemies. What's the main weakness of Ranger? It's slow fire rate. If only there were a way to boost that! Commander is a key part of any solo fallen lineup. With Call to Arms chaining, you can effectively double the DPS of your entire tower team. However, what makes the Ranger special is the rare fire bug. Something in the game's code or Roblox Center makes towers shoot slower than they're supposed to, making high fire rate towers lose a significant chunk of their DPS. But due to the Ranger's slow fire rate, the rare fire bug doesn't really apply to it, making it the perfect subject for Call to Arms chaining. Together, Ranger and Commander form a special bond that can shred through most enemies like tissue paper. Now here's where things start getting off the rails. You have your damage, and you have your support. However, you can't place any towers if you can't afford it. The next tower you need to pick is your eco tower. For this slot, you only have two choices, cowboy or farm. I do have a video comparing both of the towers, but that was made before the hardcore update, so let me give you a quick comparison of their upsides and downsides. The cowboy has a high late game cash gain, it attacks, it works as an early game defense, and it works as a hidden detection tower. However, it's less consistent, it's harder to use, and it usually gets less cash overall. Farm, on the other hand, has a consistent cash gain, it usually gets more cash overall, and it's easy to use. However, it can't attack at all, it does zero DPS at max. Ultimately, the choice between farm and cowboy is up to you. Use whatever suits you. I'd say farm is better for beginners, and it's what I use for most of my runs, but you do you. If you're planning on using a normal cowboy and not the golden version, farm is definitely the better choice. Just keep in mind that you'll need the eco tower. Next up is your early game defense. Again, ignore this part if you're using Golden Cowboy, as Golden Cowboy can do the job fine. However, if you, like most people, use farm, you will need an effective tower to defend while you farm. The best towers for this job are Golden Scout, Gladiator, and... Oh. Yeah, I see the issue now. Most of them are either event towers, towers that are hard to use, and Goldens. Hmm. Well, there's still light at the end of the tunnel for you, assuming that light isn't the train. That light is Mini Gunner, and Golden Mini by extension. Sure, Mini Gunner is a bit on the pricey side for early game tower, but if you can save up a few rounds worth of money, oh is it going to shred. If your level is a bit on the higher side, you might even be able to tank a few lives farming before you place it, and a little more farming goes a long way. Additionally, the mini gunner stays amazing far into the late game. All early game towers have to work as your secondary DPS, so they must keep a half decent DPS for late game. Another trait that your early game towers must have is the ability to detect hiddens. 
as Ranger has been changed to not have hidden detection at any level, Mini Gunner fits these roles perfectly. Funny, isn't it? A tower can detect hidden with his bare eyes, but sci-fi laser goggles from the future can't. Just try Mini Gunner, Golden Scout, Gladiator, Slasher, or heck, even Militant will work in a pinch. Finally, we have an extra tower slot for more damage or another utility. Towers used in this slot include, but are not limited to, Accelerator, Turret, and Pursuit. However, my favorite tower to use for this slot, as well as the most used tower for this slot, is DJ. DJ Booth is just an all-around amazing support, as, although you might want to invest in the others if you are using a slightly less DPS dealing or smaller range early game tower. As for cowboy users, you have two extra slots so you can bring both or one of them plus farm for extra cash. There are more towers that can be used for solo fallen, but these are the best. My personal loadout is Golden Minigunner, DJ, Ranger, Farm, and Commander. And finally, here's a chart for what purposes each good solo fallen tower has, and if you want to pause the video and check it out. Cauldron Arms Training is a highly useful skill used to effectively keep the commander's Cauldron Arms ability up at all times, therefore doubling your fire rate. To do this, think of your commanders as 1, 2, and 3. Use the ability on 1, then click on 2. When the yellow effects fade, use the second call to arms ability. When this one fades, use call to arms ability number 3. By the time the third call to arms ends, the first one's cooldown would have already ended. Rinse and repeat. The call to arms ability lasts a full 10 seconds. In this time, you can go upgrade your troops or place more before coming back to use another ability. Be sure not to overlap abilities, though. Stacking is probably not needed on most maps as you're soloing, but if you do need it, just tilt your camera at an angle and place a ranger on the very edge of the cliff. And if it works, it should show the ranger's range being clipped into the cliffside. And then you can place another ranger on top of it. Do keep in mind that stacking doesn't work on every map. A mistake I see a lot of people make is over defending. You might be going, hold on, I thought that's a good thing. Wrong. You want to be farming as much as possible and placing the minimum amount of defense required to survive. As for farms themselves, level 1 and level 3 farms are the most cost effective. Go for them whenever possible. So I asked the wiki what killed them the most when they were solo and fallen, along with a few of what I thought was annoying, and put them on a list from annoying to lethal. Let's go over how to defend against them. The giant boss is fairly simple to deal with. A single level 3 ranger should solo it. The only time when issues arise for me is when all my towers are focused on it and I get rushed by a bunch of fallens. Next up is the shadow boss. You can deal with this by spending less money on your ranger for a round or two and upgrading your hidden detection. The best counter to tank is having a few rangers up, and then use call to arms ability on them when tank comes. And here we have a crowd favorite, mysteries. For this, we're going to have to talk about our favorite video game mechanic, luck. Mysteries on their own are more or less harmless, but what's annoying is what they spawn. Sure, they could just spawn in abnormals and speedies, but a good chunk of the time, they're going to spawn in a bunch of abnormal bosses, which spell death for you and your run. It's completely RNG, so I don't have a counter for this. And finally, the Fallen King, the final boss, and a deadly nuisance. One wrong move and you're dead. This is where your farming comes in handy, because with all your extra cash, you will be able to afford a ton of defense. Remember, greed is the name of the game. Well, actually, it's Tower Defense Simulator, but you get the point. With all your maxed out troops, you should be able to kill it and take the victory. Hello everyone, if you've watched this far into the video, thank you so so much. I've spent three weeks making this, and boy is it good for it to be finally over. If you've already made it so far into the video, please like and subscribe and comment, it helps the algorithm. I do know my video's qualities aren't probably aren't that amazing, but you know, I'm doing the best I can, even if that isn't very much. 
I'd also like you to know that I'm going to be making a follow-up video to this, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Anyways, thanks for watching, and that's going to be it for this video. Bye.